Welcome back to MMA Odds Breaker. Today we got Lewis Smoker, the last samurai, getting ready to fight Neil Siri. Came up here on UFC 189, July 11th. Uh, that's a crazy week. It's a UFC Fan Expo here in Las Vegas. Um, your fight is July 11th, and the next night is the tough finale, uh, July 12th. So it's going to be a busy week. Um, busier than normal. Do you think any of that's going to bother you? Because it's a lot more fans than normal in town. There's two fights going on, so even if they're not making it into your fight, They'll probably make it into the, the fight the next the night after. So be a lot more fans than normal, a lot more a lot more um, autograph signers, I guess. Uh, is that going to bother you at all? Do you think? Uh, probably not. Um, I don't know. I try not to let that they, like try not to like let the moment um get get a hold of me too much. You know, I'm just going to try to like tell myself it's not that big a deal until it's all over. Then I'll like take it in. Hey, how long you gonna stay? Emotion. How long you gonna stay huh? after the fight? Oh, I'm I'm headed straight back home afterwards. Um, my girlfriend's pregnant and stuff, okay. so you know we're expecting a kid. So I kind of want to be with her. When is uh? What's the due date? Um, actually Christmas. Okay, so you got some time. Yeah. So there's no there's no worry about in the middle of the fight all of a sudden getting a phone call. Hey, I'm in labor. There's no worry. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 none of that, none of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go back. Uh, two fights. Uh, was it Chris Carlasso? Is that who it was? Split decision. Yeah. What happened in that fight that you think, if you just did a little bit more, because it's a split decision loss, you could have, all you had to do is convince one more judge to kind of lean your way. What do you think you had to do more, of, if there's any one thing you could have done more of to kind of make one of the judges lean on you? Um, That fight, I don't really know what happened, man. That was honestly the worst performance I've ever had. Like, that was just not a good fight for me. I don't know. I, he wasn't really pushing the pace. I was expecting him to engage more and, like, there wasn't very much engaging when we did like clinch up. Like honestly, he was kind of more holding me than I was holding him. Like, like even though I was pressing him against the cage, he was holding on to me. Like he didn't want me to back out and stuff. And so like I don't know. It was just it was a really weird fight. And I don't know. I'm just trying to get past it. I don't. I really don't. Want, like, I just don't want to fight like that again. I have to push right. the pace. I have to fight how I like to fight. I have to have fun. Did you change? And did anything happen in training camp? Because, like, the next fight you come in and with uh, Richie and you, you crush him. You know, you're beating him up for three rounds and you knock him out in the third. I mean, it was a relatively easy – not easy, but at home on the couch, it looked easy for you. You know what I'm saying? No fight's easy, but watching on TV, it looked easy. Did you change how you trained to kind of get over that hump? Um. Well, one of the major things we cha we changed, honestly, that fight, I was being really lazy with my strength and conditioning. For the carry also fight, I did, like, no strength and conditioning. My next fight, and then afterwards, I started like a new program and stuff. Um, like I, I, I was working out before. Like I, I had like strength and conditioning, but I was just slacking with it. I was just being really, really lazy. I don't know, man. And then so like, like afterwards, you know, having to eat that first loss, it really kind of woke me up. And I was like, all right, well, I guess this is for real now. This is the big time. I can't be just playing around and doing whatever I want. You know, acting like a child. I have to be disciplined. How was your weight? Because a lot of guys, when they change their strength and conditioning programs, they either lose a lot of weight, or they put a lot of muscle mass on, it makes it more problematic to make weight fight time. Um, well, right now, my weight is pretty good. Um, I'm hovering around 25 pounds out, which is really good. Um, I feel really strong, really good. We've been working on like um, stabilizing muscles and working on making me more explosive, so that's been good. Um, but like the way we've been lifting, it's been to... like gain more strength and not size okay so i'm like doing strength lifting with low reps so i'm not putting on a ton of weight and are you worried about putting on any more weight because you said if i heard you right you said you're 25 pounds over right now yeah dude that's a it, it, okay if you're if you're 265 and you're 25 pounds over that's not that big of a deal when you're 125 and you weigh 150 that's a huge amount of weight um yeah, it is, but um, I, I, I feel like I cut it well. Like, I've, I've been cutting wheat, like, my whole life. Like, when I was a kid, I used to cut, like, in high school, I'd cut, like, 15, 20 pounds every week. Or not, well, not 20, 10 to 15 every week. So, you know, it wasn't, it's not that big a deal for me. It's like, I've done this before, you know. You're you're only 23, so you're still young. That, they'll still keep working. But once you get into your 30s, it's going to change a little bit. But then, of course, you grow up in size, and it'll be a lot, you know, it'll, you'll make a move up to 35 at some point if you're still in the game. You know, but we're talking 10 years from now, so it's, it's not yeah. an issue for right now. There, um, You're really looking at a situation where some other people will listen to this interview and go, wow, 25 pounds, you know, trying to get that weight off to make weight. Wow, I wish I could lose 25 pounds, you know, in six weeks as well. You make weight, you make weight on Friday night, 
and then you fight Saturday. When you walk into the cage, what do you weigh? Um, honestly, I've been as heavy as maybe 45, but I don't like to get that heavy. I feel like I perform my best between around 38 to 42, 138 to 142. I feel like that's where I've built my best. I feel like a good mix of like, I still have my speed, you know? Mm-hmm. And you've, and you've recovered enough, and you have enough hydration in you to Yeah, to get I, st- it I still feel strong, but I'm, I feel quick too, you know? When you when you change strength and conditioning programs, did you change strength and conditioning coaches or just started doing the program like you're supposed to? Um, I changed coaches. I went to this place called um, Fitness Reigns. Now I go to um, Fitness Reigns in Hawaii. It, it was actually named one of the top um, 50 gyms by Forbes magazine and Yelp or something like that. Right. Oh, no, no, not Forbes. Um, sorry. It's like Men's Muscle and Ink, something like that. I'm sorry. Yeah. I can't remember, but it's yeah, right. it was a pretty it's big right. deal. Is it, uh, did it increase price-wise? Did that increase like the cost of your training camp? Because I have to pay a little bit more to your, to that academy to train you for strength and conditioning? Um... Not really, no. Um, he actually sponsors us. He 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 does most of our stuff for free, and and, and we um, we like will will just like you know shout him out on Instagram and stuff. Yeah. And he's like a sponsor, and you know if I do well, like I, um, I just give him a little bit. Of, I just give mm-hmm. him like some of my bonus money or whatever if it works out well, you know. Good. That's that's actually a pretty good a pretty good way because then he believes in himself yeah. as much as you guys believe in him. Because we come with yeah. that bonus money, like hey, dude, it worked. Like hey, you saw the hit. You saw how strong I was. Like, here it goes. So Yeah. Well, let's talk about Neil Siri a little bit, your opponent. Break him down for me. I know you've seen tape on him. I know you've, you've studied him. So let's let's talk a little bit about him. What kind of fight do you think he's going to try to bring to you? Um, He's a pressure boxer from what I've seen. He's like a – he likes to really um plant and pressure and come forward. Um, I, I've been trying to work with that, with the pressure boxing style. Um, I'm trying to come up with a few game plans to work around it, look for some of his tendencies and things. I notice he likes to switch stance every now and then, um, likes the big punches. Um, but I, without giving too much away, yeah. I feel like I feel like I've kind of figured it out, and we have a really good game plan in place. Did you did you have to come to the game plan, or did your coaches help develop it as well? Um, my coaches are pretty much handling my game plan. They're kind of just like tailoring it to like my fight style, like the things like with my tendencies. We're gonna work with. We're gonna do certain things to try to, you know, um, make the fight happen where I want it to happen and how I want it to happen. You know, that makes complete sense. And and it's it's tough too if you have coaches that want to change, you know, what your base is or change how you are. Then all of a sudden it's, it becomes a whole problem trying to relearn during train camp as opposed to getting better because you're just building on the base you already have. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's just basically like building around my style, building around the things that I like to do, what works for my, um, what works for me, you know. I'm not trying to completely change my fight style or anything. All right, last question. Obviously, Hawaii is a huge place that people are going to go on for vacation. A lot of fighters go over there to, just to take time off. I'm there all the time, you know, working a little bit and vacationing. It, is Hawaii Elite MMA a place where people can walk in and just like, hey, I'm here, I'm in town, I want to train? You know, is it one of those places that's like super private, no one likes me, no one wants someone else coming in? Um, yeah, it, it's pretty private. Um, my coach handles most of the stuff. Like, it, it's mostly just to like weed out guys that like have no experience, but they're coming in off the street. Like, yeah. oh yeah, bro, I want to train. I want to do this. Like, you know, I want to get in there with you guys. And it's like, uh, maybe you should go and do some <laughs> beginner stuff first, bro. You yeah. know, like it, it's mostly just to keep those guys kind of guys out because it's like you have these dudes coming in off the street who don't really know what they're doing. And they're getting beat up, and it. Not only looks bad for them, it looks bad on us. We look like bullies. We look like yeah, like we're we're doing like we're we're just like like picking on these guys. But it's like you know that's not how I wanted it to be. You know, like we're honestly our team is really high level. We're really elite level guys from all yeah. over the island, and so you can't just have a, a beginner come in and try to spar with us. Like it's just not gonna go well. Like, we're gonna be nice to them and stuff, but it's like you're gonna get crushed. We we need to train. Yeah, yeah, we need to get our training in. We can't be like toning it down to cater to you. Because, just yeah. for you, you know, just some dude off the street. We can't be catering to you, you know? No, it makes sense. And a lot of gyms are starting to do that now where, you know, a lot of gyms have like your group class and then you have to apply and and test for pro practice to be able to go into the pro practice session. If you don't make it, then, and there's been guys in there that kind of, kind of weeded through and like, you're not real sure or whatever. And you get that first pro practice and you get to that first pro practice. You're like, yeah, the guy's got to get back. He's got to go back down, take more classes. He's not going to make it. So yeah, I've, yeah. I've seen it quite a bit. So Lewis, thanks for taking some time with us today, man. I really appreciate you coming on here with Emily Oddsbreaker. It was great to finally talk to you and 
and get through this. I'll see you. I'll be at the fight. I'll see you uh, fight week for sure because here in town. So I'll be there checking it out. I'll see you, man. Um, you're getting inducted to the Hall of Fame that weekend, right? Yeah, that day, actually, the day of your fight. I get uh, the induction is around noon or one o'clock that afternoon, and then the fights are that night. So, yeah. All right, on, man. Big yeah. weekend for both of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, bigger for you. Bigger for you. I'm, uh, I have to go in and relive my accolade of losing to Matt again. So, that's what that's my big deal. So, but for you, you get to go in and walk away with a victory. So, hopefully, man. Hopefully, yeah. Frank. All right, brother. Hey, I'll see you that week for sure. I'll definitely come down and say hi to you before our uh, wins. All right, bro. I mean, I'll talk to you soon. See you. See you, bye.